Hi everyone, it's Rosie from Talking About BPD and today it's day three of my daily DBT videos and I'm going to be talking about identifying emotions. When I started DBT, I thought I already knew how to identify emotions. Um, I always saw myself as a fairly emotionally literate person who understood things quite well. However, I have to say that DBT gave me a whole new perspective on emotions, um, why we have them, what they do, and how to relate to them. Um, so I hope this video can be a little insight if you're um, new to DBT. Um, so, so yeah, so I thought I'd start by explaining one of the key concepts in DBT. So DBT says that your emotions are always valid. And what that means is, um, no matter how you feel, it, there's nothing bad about you for how you feel. The way you feel is very understandable given what you've been through, um, given the world that you live in, um, you know, and there's nothing to be, that's wrong about you for how you feel. Especially because things may have happened to you in the past, or people might have related to you in a certain way. and. You know, DBT is, in my experience, very understanding of what people have been through to get them to a place where their emotions are very dysregulated and very up and down. However, in DBT, um, the therapists ask the people to check whether their emotions actually fit the facts. Um, really that's to see if your emotional response to a situation is based on what is actually happening in front of you or whether it's something maybe that's been activated from the past or maybe how you're interpreting a situation um, so in order to be able to check whether your emotion fits the facts um, it's really important to know what your emotion looks like or what your emotion is in order to kind of identify what the emotion is to check if it's working in line with the facts of the situation at hand in the present. Um, okay, I know that's a little bit confusing if you've not done DBT before, but hopefully I can give you some examples. So, um, for example, um, sadness. If you're feeling sad because um, your boss tells you you're, you've lost your job it's your sadness fits the facts you know if you've enjoyed that job and you're sad about that job ending and, and having to leave in that manner then your sadness certainly fits the facts because you've lost something important to you it's natural and understandable to feel sad about that and it fits the facts however um, if you get an email from your boss saying I need to talk with you um, later tomorrow, do you have time? To be crying and to be sad and telling yourself that you've lost your job and to go home devastated, it's valid that you feel that way. It, there's nothing you know, bad about you if you feel sad. However, the facts of the situation um, are not saying that you have lost your job. You're interpreting that email to be that you're going to lose your job and your mind has kind of fast forwarded or filled in the gaps to interpret what's going on rather than your sadness is fitting the actual facts at hand in that moment. So I um, hope that makes a little bit of sense. So I thought I'd go through the different emotions um, starting with sadness because I've just touched upon it. Um, I will be using the DBT skills training handouts and worksheets by the Marsha, the very famous Marsha um, Linehan. Linehan. Um, and yeah, I have, a, I have a book review video of this so I can share it with you in the links below. Um, so, so sadness. So sadness um, is, is usually associated with a loss. So if you either lose something or someone important to you, or you think that you're losing or have lost something or someone important to you, then sadness is likely to be activated. And I'm not going to talk about physical like bodily responses and how it feels in your body, um, 
today simply because it's such a big topic. However, there are lots of useful things online and in books that you can read about how emotions feel if you're interested in that. However, as my amazing therapist taught me, one of the easiest ways to identify an emotion is to look at the urge because emotions usually have an urge associated with them. So for example, sadness. Um, sadness is usually activated by loss or an interpretation of loss. And the urge associated with that is usually to withdraw, slow down, seek comfort. And I think that's probably why, you know, when I'm sad, I would lie down not do much, um, you know, maybe want want something comforting, yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to the next emotion, which is fear. So fear and anxiety are very similar. So fear is when a danger is imminent or a threat, or you perceive a threat or a danger to be here. Anxiety is more like one step further behind fear. It's kind of like predicting a threat or a danger, but it's a little bit further away from you than fear would than it than 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 it would be if you were feeling fear. So um, usually the urges associated with fear are to freeze, fight, um, or flight. So that's generally why when somebody is scared. They might avoid a situation um, or run from a situation or maybe just sort of freeze, find it really hard to make a decision or know what to do because of that scary feeling. Um, so fear would be justified in fitting the fact if there is a genuine danger. Um, fear doesn't fit the fact if there is no danger. So it's, it's so easy to think danger is around you. If you've experienced danger in the past, it's easy to kind of see it in situations that are not actually dangerous or threatening in the present. So, um, so yeah. Um, the next emotion is anger. Um, so anger is generally activated by a feeling of injustice. So if a situation is unfair, unjust, um, you know, morally wrong, then it's very um, apt and it really fits the facts to be angry. And generally the urges with anger are to fight back, defend, defend your position, defend your beliefs and defend what you think is right or what you know is correct. Um, it can uh, spur you on to overcome goals. Like for me, for example, I was so angry about how um, people with BPD have been ceaselessly discriminated against that my anger has actually fueled me to, to, to write about it and express things about how angry I feel um, in order to try and make some tiny like, he headway in this area. Um, and anger can also uh, make people like m remove themselves from threats, so walk away or, or, or back off from somebody or something. Um, okay, the next interest, uh, the next emotion is really interesting. It's disgust. So this is when you come into contact with something or someone who um, it feels like they're going to contaminate you or um, they're so repulsive that you feel in danger from being contaminated by them, um, or you feel like closeness with that person could seriously harm or damage you, and the urge is that you want to get away, uh, or kind of like clean yourself of that situation or that person. So, you know, if you touch a mouldy food or like a really, dirty surface or something you're going to want to clean because you feel there's a threat to your the integrity of yourself and your your body and it's the same with people if there's a person who you feel is very repulsive to you it's completely fitting the facts that you would move away not be close to them not touch them so so 
Yeah, right. Gosh, that's a lot of information to take in. I need a coffee break. Okay. So the next emotion is going to be, okay, love. Probably the best emotion. Um, so love is when you value a person or a thing or an activity or an animal and they enhance your life, they, they make you feel good, they enhance your, your quality of life, they help you achieve your goals and they help you live a meaningful life in line with your values. Um, and the urge associated with love, as hopefully everybody knows, is to be close to that be close to that person or thing or, or activity do more of it and engage with with that and maybe like share that as well with others as well because it's quite infectious when you feel you know love and enjoyment of someone or something that you want to share quite often you want to share that with other people um and also if you feel in danger of losing that thing then you generally will fight fight for that or do what you can to preserve and protect that thing or activity that you love so much. Um, love doesn't fit the facts when the thing or the person is actually destructive to you or is actually bringing you pain or bringing you, like making your life more like further away from your values and further away from what's meaningful to you, then love does not fit the facts. And it's anybody who's been in a relationship that is not good for them will know how difficult it is when you have a feeling of love, but it's so difficult to, to like withdraw from that, even though when your love doesn't fit the facts, basically, of the situation, it's really hard. Um, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, actually, in tomorrow's video. Um, okay, so the next two emotions are often confused with one another. So envy and jealousy. So envy is when somebody has something that you want or need. Um, not necessarily a physical possession. It could be part of a, their lifestyle or their relationships. And... If you don't have that thing, you can envy it and long for it and just wish that you had it. And the urges generally are to work towards like improving your life to get that thing or that 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 state of being. Um, so envy can motivate people to to get what they want. Um, it can urge people to have just like a destructive urge as well it can it can lead people to want to sabotage other people um which is obviously never a good plan um yeah or it, it, or actually there also can be an urge to get that other person to to share what they have or to help you get that thing so maybe even a way of trying to learn from the person who's got the thing you're envious of so it can be there is a very positive side to envy. It's a motivating emotion and it can also lead to teamwork and collaboration. So that's quite quite a good thing. Um, jealousy. So jealousy is when something that is important to you, usually a relationship, is threatened by the presence of somebody else or something else. So... Um, for example, um, if you're in a relationship with somebody and somebody else starts spending time with, with your the person you're in a relationship with, some people might end up feeling jealous because they feel threatened that that, that special person is going to be like taken away by that other person. So, um, so the urge for jealousy is generally to protect what you have, um, work at being more desirable, desirable to that person to make sure that they stay with you um, and also sometimes there's an urge to just leave, to leave the relationship as well because um, you know if it's not working out, if it's not like a healthy relationship for you or the commitment level's not there then that, that you want then um, 
the urge can be to just kind of leave that person and just let them go towards the, the person that they're gravitating to as well. So jealousy would fit the facts if there is a genuine threat of a person or a thing that you love um, or that you value being lost to another person, then jealousy does fit the facts. However, um, it, it doesn't fit the facts if there is no genuine threat and there is no genuine problem there. Um, okay, I think we are on to the last two emotions. And I'm gonna save the biggest one until last, at least in my opinion, the biggest one for me. Um, another coffee break. So, guilt, <clears throat> guilt and shame. So, guilt, guilt happens when you have a value or something that you uphold um, and you break it. So, say for example, you have a value to always be there for your friends when they need you. Um, you might feel guilty if you decide no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be there for my friends i can't be there for my friends you know something's happening and i just can't be that friend then you may feel guilty um so guilt may or may not fit the facts um guilt doesn't fit the facts if you didn't break a value or if I don't know, the thing about values is that they sometimes they have to be a little bit flexible as well. So sometimes it's hard to always be like, you know, perfect, a perfect friend or always be there for someone. Um, so yeah, so the urges for guilt usually are seek forgiveness, repair the harm or make things better. Um, so saying sorry or trying to make it up to somebody. Um, yeah, and also just to commit to avoiding the things that you did, uh, avoiding making that mistake again, or commitment to avoiding breaking that value again in the future. And so the final emotion to talk about today is shame, which I know is a huge one for so many people with BPD, including myself. And shame fits the facts when you're rejected by somebody whose opinions and beliefs that you value. And it can be so painful for so many people with BPD. Um, obviously shame doesn't fit the facts when you're you're not being rejected and also I would argue that it doesn't fit the facts if you're being rejected by somebody whose values don't make sense with your values. Um, quite often the urges associated with shame are to hide, um, to hide the thing that, that you're going to be rejected for or that you think you're going to be rejected for. Um, or to change in order to fit in. So, so yeah, so that's the end of today's video. It's been a really, really long one. And tomorrow we're going to talk about opposite action, which is a skill you can do when your emotions don't fit the facts of what's happening in the present, or when your emotions are very strong, stronger than the facts of the situation kind of warrant. So in summary, emotions are never wrong, they're never invalid. How you feel is always valid and there's nothing wrong with how you feel. However, it is important to look at the facts of the situation to check whether your emotion is warranted by what is going on in the present. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to talk about a skill called opposite action, which is a skill you can do if your emotions don't fit the facts of what's going on right now. Um, or if your emotional reaction is, is stronger than the facts of the situation at hand are warranting. So yeah, I hope you'll join me tomorrow. I know it's been a long video today, but I'd love to know your thoughts and if any of this makes sense to you. Thank you. Bye.